All right, welcome back. Um, just briefly, what we talked about in the three previous or the two previous videos and questions, we knew the properties of logs, we reviewed some older ones from Algebra 2. We learned how to simplify, how to expand, how to condense, and uh, use those questions to kind of understand how manipulation for solving would work. And finally, we very briefly learned the change of base formula and understood that this would be more than likely a calculator question or it would be part, you know, step one in a solve or something like that. It would it would uh, help you solve a question. But let's use those under things to understand how we actually solve exponential and logarithmic equations. How do I actually solve these types of questions? Again, this has shown up in every screen. This is just to remind you, hey, you should know this. You should be like sassy cat in the corner. You should already know these, th these things um, from Algebra 2 or from under recognizing it from our stuff today. So... What we're going to work on in this video is we're going to learn how to solve using one-to-one uh, -one properties right here, and we're going to solve using our simplification and properties um, from before. And then in our vi final video, we're going to understand the quadratic form and what happens when you have extraneous solutions. So here's my very first one. Uh, we are going to solve 36 to the x plus 1 is equal to 6 to the x plus 1. And so what is a 1 to 1? It's where your bases match and you end up with one thing with the same base is equivalent to one thing with the same base. You've condensed it down on both sides. Well, we're really close. We have a 1 to 1, but they're not the same base. My base over here is 36 and my base over here is 6. So step 1, we got to get the same base. So the first thing I'm going to do to that 36 is make it look like the same base. And hey, now we're getting so much closer to having the same base. But I recognize there is a property right here I can deal with. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute that too, because that goes back to Algebra 2's properties of exponential functions. And this is the power rule of exponents, which tells me a power raised to a power can be multiplied across. So this becomes 6 to the 2x plus 2 is equal to 6 to the x plus 6. A really common thing I would see here is kids would write 2x plus one, they would fail to fully distribute it out. So just make sure you're not doing that. Now that you have the same base, means you can cancel out the bases. So my sixes are going to disappear, and this is going to become 2x plus 2 equals x plus 6. This is easy enough for you to solve for yourself, so you can go ahead and move over the 2 and move over the x, and this becomes... Um, uh, x is equal to 4. You could confirm this, you know, confirm with the calculator. Confirm with calculator. You could confirm this for yourself, but in essence, this is saying 36 to the 5th power is equivalent to 6 to the 10th power, and I'm pretty sure those are equivalent statements. Alrighty, moving forward, um, this is a little bit, you know, different kind of question, but the, the same concept exists that you want both bases to be the same but first i'm going to deal with this one half right here peanut butter and jelly tells me you could have solved this a different way you could have used a different property first and it doesn't really matter which way you go but i'm going to go ahead and deal with that 64 to the one half so this is one half to the c is equal to the square root of 64. well i can solve that that's equal to technically plus or minus eight then I could ask myself, okay, well, what's happening here? What's the relationship between 2 and 8? I know that 8 is equivalent to 2 cubed, um, or negative 8 is equivalent to negative 2 cubed. Either one is acceptable. Uh, we'll confirm plus or minus closer to the end when we get to our solution, but we'll see if that affects us at all. So now I know that some one half raised to some power c is actually equivalent to 2 cubed or technically negative 2 cubed. Okay, so then I ask myself, okay, which of these is that positive value on the inside? It's really this 2. So we might be rejecting this one over here, this solution might be rejected. We would have to confirm it closer to the end, but here we're not quite the same. One half, two is on bottom. Two over one, two is on top. So what's the only way to get them to be equivalent statements? This is your negative 
uh, exponent properties. Technically, you're looking at one to the C divided by two to the C. To switch their places, you actually want to write it as two to the negative C over one to the negative C. Well, run raised to any power is just going to be one. So really, this bottom half isn't going to affect us. So we end up with step two, if I keep on moving forward, two to the negative C is equal to two cubed or negative two cubed immediately now that i've rewritten it this way we can see this is our rejected statement because two is not negative two so we already know that we're not dealing with that so my only thing left is going to be negative c equals three or c equals negative three that's my end answer again the last step would be confirm with a calculator Ugh. confirm with calculator ta-da there's our answer Moving on, so those were slightly easier, kind of that one-to-one -one base is occurring. You can see it with some manipulation. But what happens when you're looking at something like this? Well, there are a few things you can do when you're looking at something that looks funky. Well, you could take the natural log of both sides. That's something you're allowed to do, or the log of both sides. You're allowed to do that. But if I take the natural log of natural log, Mm, didn't really help me. If I take the log of natural log, it doesn't really help me. So what is that value that could cancel out the natural log? Well, if you recall, natural base and natural log are inverses. So if I take the E of both sides, and because of the way E works, it's actually going to be a base now, and these will become exponential. So if I take the E of both sides, that's what I mean. So step one, and over here, if I wrote step one, would be how they cancel how are they going to cancel and so that's what you ask yourself with each of these questions what's the easiest way i'm going to cancel and you're going to see some questions get tough no matter what but if we can avoid it we can avoid it so now i take e raised to the natural log of x is equal to e raised to the power six well we all know that the natural log of e equals one guess what e raised to the power natural log e of whatever value here is equivalent this all becomes one but it's just going to be equivalent to whatever was left there so this is an aside so right here i'm going to see that this just becomes x is equal to e to the sixth hey we're done we solved for x ta-da confirming your calculator but that's the end answer all right look at this one hey, we got some funkiness. We don't have logs on both sides, so either we could do that, but if I take the log of the right-hand side, oh, wait, I got to take the log of the left-hand side. So not really going to help us, at least not yet. We may do it eventually, but we'll see. So first and foremost, let's just get that log by itself because that's where the X is. So if I can get log isolated, I might be able to get the X isolated. So step one, how they cancel. In this instance, nothing can cancel yet. So step two, can I isolate? Okay, so let's isolate. Let's move that six over and divide by our two. So let me change my color. And we're gonna move the six and then we're gonna divide by two. So this is end up being, uh, let's put our color back. This is going to end up being uh, log of 5x is equal to 18 minus 6 was 12, and 12 divided by 2 was 6. Cool. Now, step 2. Okay. So, or really, we couldn't do step 1. We couldn't cancel. So, we moved on to step 3, and here's step, uh, step 2, and here's step 3. How do I, or going back to step 1, how do I cancel out a log? Well, if the natural log could be re removed by taking the E of both sides, that's taking its base, then what's the base of log? If you said 10, you're correct. So, I'm going to take the 10 on each side. So, this becomes 10 raised to the log of 5x is equal to 10 raised to the sixth power. This all cancels out. And so if I move over here to step four, I end up with 5x is equal to 10 to the sixth. I can divide away that five and I end up with my answer of 10 to the sixth divided by five. If I actually did the multiplication, this ends up, I think uh, 200,000, might be 20,000. Nope, I think it's 200,000 if we consider the number of zeros we got going on here. So you end up with um, uh, 1 million, and then you divide by 5, and you end up with 200,000. Ta-da! And you can confirm this with a calculator. All right.
Here, now we have logs on both sides and they happen to be the same base, but it's not one to one. It's not one log on each side. So can I condense it in any way, shape or form? In fact, I can because here is the product rule. So let's put those guys together on the right hand side. So this becomes log base four of three times X minus two. Hey, we can put that together even further and that becomes log base four of three X minus six is equal to log base four of X. Well, if I have a one-to-one -one statement with my bases equivalent on both sides, I get to cancel those out. Isn't that nice, neat and easy? And I end up with X is equal to three X minus six deal with that negative three X and I end up with negative two X equals negative six, which becomes X, uh, equals positive three. And you can confirm that with a calculator. In fact, I'm going to confirm. Yep, that is the same answer I got the first time I did this. All right, moving forward. Here, we have a one-to-one -one already occurring. Look at this. We've already got one base, one base, and nothing else on each side. So I get to already begin by canceling out, and I end up with x cubed or x squared plus three equals 52. If I keep on solving that out, I actually end up with plus or minus seven. This slide is in here to teach you the most important thing to verify because as we move on to our final video, we're gonna understand something called extraneous solutions. And those extraneous solutions have to be tested because you might reject an answer. Hey, didn't we kind of do that in a previous slide? So let's confirm that both seven and negative seven would be appropriate. Well, if I look at what I've got going on, wouldn't it just be smart to test this value right here because I can't take the log of a negative number or I can't take the log of zero. Those are undefined equations. So x squared plus three must be positive or non-negative, however. Well, no, just positive because it can't be zero. So we end up with seven squared plus three and negative seven squared plus three. And these both equal positive 52. So guess what your answer is? X equals seven or negative seven. So in this particular instance, they are the same. If our question had been somehow X cubed, seven cubed is a positive value, but negative seven cubed is a negative value. And it very likely could have knocked you into the, 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 the half of the graph that doesn't exist. Because if you recall the parent function of logarithmic functions, they do not exist. The range cannot exist from negative infinity to zero. The range only occurs, sorry, I said range, the domain, right? Your left-hand side of the graph, the domain. The domain does not occur from negative infinity to zero. It only occurs from approaching zero to approaching positive infinity. All right. Uh, just a couple more questions to get us through seven, eight, and nine. So what do I do? Here's another funky question. I really can't do anything to this. I could convert just like we did with the maze, go from exponents to logs or vice versa. Or I could take the natural log of both sides. Well, no matter which version you do, you're going to end up taking the log of both sides. So make sure that you accomplish that. So I'm actually going to do both solves. So let's say I convert, or let's say I take the natural log of both sides, and those are the two different versions that I'm going to, ah, those are the two different versions that I'm going to use right here. And so if I convert, this becomes log base 4 of 13 equals x. I can use the change of base formula to solve this out, and I end up with x is equal to the log of 13 divided by the log of 4. This can also be written as the log of 13 divided by 2 log of four if you convert. If I take the natural log of both sides, then I end up with this. This x can be dragged forward because we know that property. And then to get x by itself, I simply divide and I end up with this, which can be rewritten again as this. What's the only difference? Oops, that should be a two. What's the only difference? This side has logs and this side has natural logs. But guess what? If you plug it into a calculator, they're the exact same answer. So it doesn't matter which version you do. I'm showing you both. The second to last question we got on this problem set. Again, it looks scary. There's not much you can do except you can take the natural log of both sides. And that's going to be uh, this is equal to this. On this side, I really can't do much to this natural log, but on this side, I can bring that natural, I can bring that power function forward, and that becomes four minus three X uh, times the natural log of E. 
equals the natural log of 6. And I, we know that the natural log of e is going to disappear. It's going to become just 1. So this becomes 4 minus 3x equals the natural log of 6. From here, you're just solving an x. And so if I subtract 4 from both sides and then divide by that negative 3, this is my end answer for x, or I could deal with that negative however I want to. All right. This final question is a little bit tougher, and so what I'm actually going to do is we're going to start by solving this question in class. So what I'm going to ask you to do is how far can you get? Attempt this question. Yes, it is hard, but attempt it. I want to see how far you got. I'm going to test your mettle in class. All right, here is your opportunity to showcase your understanding.